Hi, welcome to our Amster. Recently I got this Boss Cam K1. This is a car backup camera. It's wireless, so it's very similar to the first one I ever reviewed, except that this one's higher quality. Now, this costs roughly $100, a little over $100 off Amazon. Um, here's, all, here's the box, there's really nothing printed else on the box, no specs, nothing like that. Here's the user manual. If you want to read part of it in more detail, just feel free to pause the video. And for my vehicle, the only tools I need is a flat screwdriver and a Phillips screwdriver. Electrical tape could be helpful. Here's some of the uh, techno specs for it. Here's the backup camera information. And transmitter information. So, like for example, if I had a trailer, in that case I would definitely want to set this up. All right. We have the wiretaps. Also, some zip ties here. There were two wiretaps, but four zip ties. This is the power unit for the monitor, and it also has an additional USB. Here are the specs for it 5 volt 3 amp max so that's 3 amps share between the backup camera and the USB type A charging unit I also notice how like over here the labels they all say AutoVox here's the uh, what it was wrapped in also says AutoVox the actual monitor Here's the uh, mount for the monitor. There's a ball joint so I can angle it as just to how I want. Here is the camera unit. This just goes behind the license plate. And here, you can make a little adjustments if I wanted, mirror it, or just view normal video. And here is the transmitter, wireless transmitter. This, I'll tap it into my reverse lights. That way, every time I place a car in reverse, it will automatically power this on, and the image will be displayed on the camera. Here's the antenna for a transmitter that goes right over here. If I don't want the parking guidelines, all I need to do is just cut this green wire. That's it. The middle plate for the camera has an adhesive on both sides. That way, I can just place it. I will take off my license plate, adhere it, place a plate on it. That way it's nice and secure. Now depending on your vehicle, you may want to mount it. For my vehicle, I'm going to mount it up here. That way I can run the cable through this. Or some other vehicles, you can mount it towards the bottom and just run the cable the other way. Just make sure you don't pinch the cable. For my car, the reverse light is right over here. So I need to access this compartment. That's what I need a flat screwdriver for. So for me, the Phillips screwdriver was for the license plate. The flat screwdriver is for this piece over here. Loosen a little bit, and I can just pull this out. And just need to really loosen a couple more. One over here, and then I'll just pry it open. Pry it open. This part is a little bit dim, but following back, I know it's this piece, this light over here. Just using this one as, as an example, it's basically the same type of design for reverse lights. Grab onto it and turn it counterclockwise. So I'm going to use my left hand, reach in here, turn it counterclockwise. Here it'll clip. Now I just pull it out. From my previous backup camera, I already tapped the power. So I'm going to leave this alone, but I'll still demonstrate how to tap it. Now it's time to connect the power to the reverse camera. And here is the power cord from the backup camera I ran. There's always going to be a black for your car. It might be a green, but either case, there's always going to be a black. And for the backup camera, there's always going to be a black too. So it will be black to black, the other color to the other color. And I'm going to connect the same color cords using the provided wiretaps. The way this works is for each of the polarity, the black and the black, 
they go in here like so and when this metal piece clamps down it essentially pierces the insulation the rubber insulation and wires connecting them so black and black like this now I'm going to close it close it all the way and my camera is probably not able to pick it up but on the inside I can see that it's pierced the insulation now I just need to do it for the red wires too this is so much easier than what we used to do in the past we still need to like basically slice it then run the wire tie it up use like insulation tape all right, like this, here, and now I'm going to close this to close the loop. I'm going to clip it all the way, there. If your hands aren't strong enough to close this manually, take a tool, like one of the pliers for example, and just press it down, squeeze it in, there. The cigarette power adapter, it's not micro, it's still pretty low profile compared to the other cigarette power adapters. And I already got my smartphone charging cable plugged into the extra USB port. For the monitor, on the back we have the menu, and also to adjust. Let me show how it's used. Let's put my car in reverse. So now it's powered up, I'm going to press the menu button right over there. So that way I can cycle through. Right now it says bright. It's already set to 51%. Contrast, color, and language. I'm roughly one car distance from my garage. And I'm showing that because, I'm put the car reversed for a sec here. I'm showing that because these lines, they give you a sense of the distance, but to get the full distance you need to adjust the camera angle. It's nighttime and I'm going to set the car in reverse. I just want to demonstrate the image quality. And a lot of it is dependent on my reverse light. I can still see color. This thing doesn't have night vision. It's not like the black gray scale night vision that we see with Sony cameras. I can still see the green grass. I can see the smoke coming up from my exhaust. I can still make out the curbs. Now it's fuzzier compared to daytime. It's definitely not HD quality, but in terms of being able to operate the vehicle safely, see what's behind me, see uh, the distance of the object behind me, this is still functioning great. I can see that another vehicle is driving, approaching my vehicle right now, and that vehicle is going past me. Oh, well, just pulled in. I got two vehicles behind me. Let's see. Oh. Both of them are my neighbor's cars. Well, so overall, I like this item a lot. Overall, I think this is well worth. Overall, this is well worth it. It's very easy. It's well worth it. Installation takes about ten. I think this is well worth the hundred dollars I paid. I think this is well worth. In terms of value, I think it's well worth it. Setting this up took a lot less time than the other one. The other one was wired cable where I had to run the wire all the way from the trunk to the front to the front cabin. With this one, once I tap it into my reverse lights, everything else is wireless. Even with the cigarette power adapter, it had a built-in USB type A port so I can still charge my smartphone. There are a couple of minor cons. For instance, once I put the car in reverse, it takes about a second to a second and a half for the image to display on a monitor. Whereas if this was a wire knit, it takes half a second. Another con is that this is an unsecured wireless channel. So if there are a number of wireless signals around me with other video monitors or other wireless cameras also unsecured, sometimes the monitor will flicker, it'll pick up those signals. Or just in this case right now, it just flickered. I don't think I have any other conflicting signals around me, but it was just not it's not always a, a clear, consistent signal. Sometimes there's a little bit of artifacts, like for example, just, just before it flickered again. But really, that's not a big deal. It doesn't really last that long. It's just a flicker here and there. Besides those minor cons, I don't have any other major complaints. 
Well, thanks for watching this review of the Boss Cam K1. If you guys have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching, Uncle Hamster. Bye.